a lot of scope for customization and it's a really fun shape, really poseable as well. Hello, this is BJ from Hearns Hobbies and I'm going to be looking at this Hasegawa kit, which is a bit of a favorite of mine and also of Warwick's because we've built one of these before, but a different version. So this is the Mechatro Wego robot. This is in 1 to 20th scale, which is a nice big size. They also make them in 35th scale where there's two particular robots in a kit. But this is a single robot with the, uh, the child driver inside and it's got a lot of um, funky parts that open up and uh, it's also jointed. So one of the great things about this particular Mechatro Wego is it just looks so interestingly cute and it's not particularly weaponized. It's a, a civilian style. Uh, and this particular version is a little bit different to the one that uh, Warwick and I have built because it's got the extensions of these power arms. So it makes it a bit like a power lifter. All right, so this on the side will give you a little bit of a better idea of what to expect. So you've got the whole front end which can lift up and then you've also got the driving compartment which can be left on the bottom there. So basically it works like a lift going up and down so you can set it in either way. There's a little boy driver figure. And then there's all these decals that allow you to choose what sort of hazard type finish you want. Because the great thing about these is even though they are molded in particular colors, they're really open for interpretation. You can paint it up any way you like. All right, let's have a closer look inside. So you can see the box is reasonably big size. Now I like the way Hazegao have gone into this style of, um, I guess fantasy style uh, kits. Uh, they just open up the imagination. All right, so let's just pull out each bag of sprues at a time. So there's, there's multiple sprues in each bag. Now they've done a little bit of color uh, separation, but most of these will um, look much, much better if you add some paint to them. So you've got the orange sections here. So this has got um, different colored um, uh, feet. And then you've got the power arms there as well in the orange. And then underneath you've got the little hatch. So it's a hatch which is on the roof of the, um, the robot. They can open up and you have the, the guy's head poking out. You've got a section of clear here. This is actually the instrument panel and the head-up display. So the edges here you'll paint black. You've got a few little uh, lenses and over here as well. And then underneath, okay, so here is the silver. Uh, they're the caps for the... Um, for the knees and also for the elbows. There's a little bit of a, a turquoise um, color here. They're the accents for the sides. They're the air intakes um, and the bottoms of the feet. As we turn it around, got this blue color here. This is uh, most of the joints. So they captured ball joints here. And then you have sections uh, here is for the hands. So they're little nippers like this and you can have them set closed or open. And you've got these press type parts here which will go into the poly caps. Maybe I'll just see the gray poly caps underneath. And poly caps are the rubberized parts that help with the movement of the overall model. Some black sections there too and there's the soles of the feet. Other bits and pieces too. So a lot of parts jam packed in this one bag. So I'll put that over there. Over here we have the driver figure, the little boy. Very well sculpted, you see the facial features are really nice, quite realistic. Now with the figurines that myself and Warwick have done, we've modified them slightly. So Warwick's got this figurine holding a board, asking if anyone's got spares because his robot's broken down. And mine's actually poking up the top with his head angled down, looking at uh, uh, a girl figure in my diorama. So that's the front end and then see the rear end. Quite nice, you've got the hoodie and all the nice folds in the clothing. And you see how you've got these square sections here so that it fits perfectly within the square blocks on the, uh, the torso. All right, so that's your figurine. Okay, we're getting into, actually there's only one bag left and there's a lot more stuff in here. Okay, so again, you've got multiple colored pieces. You've got this sort of pearl white section here. This is the front end of the robot. This is the part that can actually fold up and you can see access to the cockpit and the figure. You've got these front panels here, which actually slide here. 
So you can have those painted in a different color and they're just slide in place and you have all this color separation. This is the part of the top of the helmet and there's a little um, opening there which I showed you the hatch before. That's actually the front and these little dimples here are for the eyes. Now as we go into the, the white one here, so the white section this is actually the back, this flips and matches that side there. So this has got the, um, the exhaust uh, and the engine compartment, that's the engine compartment cover. And then we've got the hand controls and there's the uh, control lever for the cockpit. Let me see if we can get a bit of view of the other stuff that's in here. All right, let's turn around this way. We've got the blue sections here. These are all the, uh, I guess it's the structural parts of the arms and the legs. So they're the raw frames. And then you have the armor components, which is just that ivory color behind there, which will fit over the top of that. Let's see if you can sort of see it a bit better here. Might be able to just see it through here. So they just fit over the top. Then there's another section in here, which are um, uh, extra parts for the arms, the power arms. And the light blue underneath is the main frame for the inside. So it's very much like building a Gundam, I guess. You've got the inner frame, outer frame, and then your armor. So similar construction here. And with that comes all the complexity. So you have the, all the opening components, you know, the hatch that can open up from the top. Uh, also, this whole head can move back and forth, so quite a lot of um, variation is possible. Okay, so from there, that's all the plastic parts. That's that uh, really great um, decal sheet. That's going to have a lot of spares uh, because you have your uh, your white background or your yellow background for the hazard markings on the arms. And then you have all these uh, generic style branding decals as well. The Chubu, uh, various numbers, so you can put different numbers on. So Pretty much anything you like. So this is, it's got a lot of uh, a Mac feel about it as well, which you know, we also like. And also being 120th scale, it's very easy to incorporate into that universe if you like. So there's a nice decal sheet. And then we come up to the manual. Okay, so manual starts. Let's see, where's the start? Okay, folds all the way out. Uh, let's go like this. Okay, so big manual. And then on this side, it's got quite a lot of color. It gives you the uh, the box art type color configuration. So you've got all your options there. So the actual manual starts from this end here. So it gives you the basic uh, list of all the parts, the codes and numbers, so you know where to find them. There's your decal sheet. And then you start with the construction. So with the first part, we're building up the uh, the arms. So you've got your sides of the arms clipping together. So you've got all these ball joints and all these parts here. So they're like the fingers. These are the actual arm components themselves here. So you usually have the little pincer part, but the power arm is being fitted on instead. Again, you've got these poly caps that go into the shoulder uh, and elbow construction, so you've got all the movement. There's your little ball joint that gets captured. And then you move over to this side. Let's see, so we've got section 10, we go up to section 11. All right, so I'll move it across here. All right, so you start making the legs. Okay, so you've got the, uh, the thigh part, the lower leg, and then you start making the feet. So the feet go together, ankles, you've got all the joints here, and this is all pressed together. The arm apart here for the shin, and that's one leg. And then you do the same uh, procedure for the other side. Once you do that, you're doing the main framework here for the robot torso. So there's framework all going together. You've got the rear section. This is the engine detail that gets squeezed on, and then it's as simple as the legs with the armor cover. They just get pressed onto these ball joints. And hence with ball joints, you get a lot of movement. So you can do a lot of really interesting poses. And you can see here how it's just pressed together and it's clipped on. From here, you've got the covers. These are the covers that uh, just 
are end caps for the armor. And then you've got the arms which are, were assembled at the beginning. And they just get pressed on as well into these ball joints. Again, you've got these little covers and that shows you how to build covers. There's two halves of the armor with the cap. And then you get the head part. So this is the, uh, the little hatch I showed earlier, the little round one. There's a head upside down. You've got the eyes going onto the head. So that'll be a, a little light structure. This part here is making the uh, hinges for attaching the head. These are all um, very thin joints so that when the head gets pressed on, you can easily move it back and forth. And then you've got assembly of the figurine. Quite simple, there's only four parts. You've got the head to the torso and the arms. The control panel. So this is like the elevator part which comes up from the bottom. You've got the, uh, the levers. This part here is a hinge section for holding this particular platform onto the bodywork. There's a back section that gets pressed on to cover the engine. You've got the very back cover and then secondary cover. This is the construction of the front. So you've got some of the sensors going to the front and then the belly and the chest plates going on then that gets pressed on. So you see here with the, the hinge, this is how the back of the head sort of moves backwards. And then this presses on. And then this diagram just gives you an idea of how the rest of it goes in place. So here's the, the hinge here for holding onto the driver's compartment. So you can either have it all stretched out, resting on the ground, or you can have it folded up inside an actual torso. So that's showing the action. So belly up, and then the inside can fold down. And that's the end of it, all complete. So we'll turn back around here, so that gives you a better idea of how it goes together. So if it was all complete, all folded in, it's like so, it's like a full robot. Or if you open him up and fold him out, you'll have him standing on the ground here with a hinge at the back. A lot of scope for customization, and it's a really fun shape, really poseable as well. So that is one of my favorites. This is the Mechatro Wego 120 scale from Hasgawa with the power arms. <laughs>